Hey, let me remind you about what happened last time on The Incorrigible Party. Striking down the undead theft with a conjured fireball and a mighty smite, the party defeats the last of the chamber's threats and check Bryn's motionless body. How's she doing? She is gone. Can't you heal her? There's got to be something we can do for her. This... I can't accept this. If we could take her body to a cleric, they may be able to resurrect her. But I am not skilled enough to do any such thing myself. Not wanting to risk the reanimation of another deceased friend, the party loads Bryn's body into Falzern's bag of holding for transport. Yeah, this never came up, but Bryn was double-jointed, so very easy to (laughs) come back there in there. This is why she got so high in her acrobatics. Finally responding to the battle's noise, the party spots more inhabitants of the unexplored cave system approaching. Shaft recognizes one of them from his past, Surma, a turquoise-skinned tiefling. Thinking quickly, he instructs Shakara and Falzern to hide. I can probably explain why I'm here. I can't explain why you're here. You're going to have to trust me. Weapon sheathed, Shaft reveals himself to Surma and the two robed figures that accompany her, telling the tiefling he has come to see Danzig. She reluctantly obliges, and the halfling brothers are reunited at the site of a ritual sacrifice. With great jubilance, Danzig invites Shaft to participate, to join him in awakening Grey Lakina, and handing him his ceremonial dagger. Feigning his eagerness to assist, Shaft accepts the dagger, attempting to corrupt the ritual by completing its steps out of order. And I'm going to yell, Thank you so much, Grey Lakina! And I jab the knife into his gut and cut it across. Despite his efforts, the ritual appears to be successful revealing to the party the source of the black ooze that contaminates the lake above them. And now, on with our show. I would like to say that the whole point here was I was trying to give you guys an opportunity to run as I grabbed their attention and what I was doing. (laughs) I did exactly what they wanted me to do. So they were all focused on me, yelling out, thank you so much. That's your opportunity to run to the water. The water where Cray Lakina is and will devour us. You want us to run there? Shaft is going to die. It's all good. I've seen this happen. Um, so Shaft has ran into the water. Mm-hmm. The ritual is still going on. and Oh, the ritual is complete. Right, but they're all kind of standing around in the, in the same area. That the they cultists have already. ceased their chanting once Shaft's, or Surma's final blow went in. Surma continued... But yeah, there is a chance for you guys to react. What do you want to do? So I'm going to cast uh, Fog Cloud. And I'm going to center it basically so that they're all within it. I'm going to obscure the area that they're all in, which which should prevent them from seeing. And then I'd like to run around the edge of it and follow Shaft. And I'm going to be pulling um, Shakara with me. Nice job. And, of course, Shakara, you, you can see because the candles are still illuminated, even with as the fog swirls around them. Reduced visibility now, of course, but you st- the, light, the candles are still putting some light through the fog, despite obscuring the vision of everyone captured in it. And Danzig kind of looks, what? Is this part of the ritual? It's Kray Lakino. I, what? What's going on? Shaft, where'd you go? My brother, please come back. Yeah, there is no way I was going to run towards the water till. Falls are in, started pulling me, and then I'm like still in a state of what the hell, so I just go with him. I'm like, I don't know what's going on, but I'm gonna. Yeah, I like whisper to her, it's all right, they're not gonna be able to see through this, just just follow me. Yeah, but I don't want to go in that water. It's it's our only way out, Shikara. We, we've got to get out of here. I, I go with you. I mean, there's too many of them. No kidding, I don't want to go right past them either. <laughs> Jump in my bag of holding real quick. Yeah. <laughs> so, Shakara and Falzern, you are able, with Falzern's excellent distraction, you're able to get to the water. And you can't see Shaft. He's already in and under. And if you recall, though, even under the water, there's zero visibility without a light source. As you guys get to the edge of the water, though, just kind of outside of the, the fog cloud, right, as you've kind of encompassed this whole six-pointed star... You see the slime, the, the the kind of the last remnants of the of this this 
now animated substance continuing its way into the water and the last of it gets into and below the surface the the water it starts to boil around this large shadow the the the, the banta black which we described as the banta black shadowy in it you can see the the trail itself the same kind of black leading directly into it and, and feeding into it as it seems the kind of swell how much of the area of the entrance to the water is taken up by this extra blackness? Uh, so it's like this large shadow, kind of just about 15 feet away from the land, basically, kind of into the the water, closer to the, the eastern side of it. You know, if you're looking at it on the right side of the map, if you're looking at the screen, right? We can easily skirt around it, though? Oh yeah, there, this is a, quite a large chamber. The chamber is like 120-ish feet wide. It's quite a large body of water that you... I mean, you made it in unknown, unknowingly you made it in around it. The way you came in. And stay away from it. Can I cast another spell? I'd like to use Firebolt in a similar way that I did before, uh, just to shoot it straight ahead and shed any light that might come off of it in a direction to see. So you want to continue like illuminating a path for yourself. Right. Yes. Okay. That's excellent. You guys make it still under the effect of your water breathing potions. You make it into the water. Now, <laughs> strangely, a guiding bolt from Falzerin as he's letting out this fire kind of pointing the way. And Shaft, what uh, what are you doing for a light source? Are you kind of just getting in and waiting, or what are you doing? I, I was getting in and, and waiting. I figure one of two things they're going to think that Kralakina killed me. They don't know that I can breathe water. So I, if I had to hang down there in the depths, I would. But if, I, if they can get in and somehow we can hook up, that's what I was waiting for. Okay, great. I point and launch this little bolt of flame, which will hopefully illuminate a little bit and at least give us a a general direction to follow or or to see if it's a direction that we don't want to go oh no it's yeah absolutely it's definitely enough to guide the now three person party through and basically you know the uh this this kind of underwater tunnel that led up into the surface it dipped down and then kind of up right to form this little elbow yeah uh, where the water can't quite Settle, and you're able to guide your, your put the party back into and up, out of the this cave and kind of into the lake proper, like the body of of the actual lake. So why don't you uh, fall in? You're kind of leading the way. Why don't you make me a survival check to uh, orient yourself as far as up, down, left, right? Once you're out of this main tunnel, uh, eleven. Okay, that's that's fine. Uh, that's enough to be able to cast your bolt, kind of in a upwards direction from your perspective and and know you can literally just swim up because you are kind of coming down and up towards the surface. Okay. So you guys are swimming in this kind of group because Shaft and Shakara move, swim at half speed, so they're fairly slow in the water. Are you are you going ahead of them, Falzern, or are you sticking with them? I will be in front of them, but I'm, I don't plan to outpace them. Uh, I want to be close enough that they can, you know, kind of see to follow me. Yeah, I'm following the light. Yes, absolutely follow the light as you kind of send up your, your fire bolt upwards and now into the lake, you it streaks past these shelled forms that you kind of just get a glimpse of coming towards you. Oh, sweet, it's the rescue party. We're saved. <laughs> I mean, following the light, that's what Bryn did. <laughs> Carolyn, don't go into the light. So we see shelled, fo- about how many of them? Uh, it does, it, the light kind of glints off two sections of carapace. It's a little difficult to tell the number, but... Shelled as in crab or turtle or what? Difficult to tell. And it seems like it's moving towards you. All I can see is the light. I'm gonna cast another firebolt um, in the in the same direction. See if I can see, uh, get a better look at what that was. Can you make me an attack roll? Perhaps I would try to cast it a bit closer, but I don't want to hit it. 
Oh, you don't want to hit it. Okay. I think you were supposed to hit it. <laughs> no, just make an attack roll with disadvantage. Uh, 23. That's with disadvantage? I rolled, I rolled well, yes. Wow, okay, yeah. <laughs> so you send out the second bolt, and as it's streaking through the water, it hits the chest of this crab-like form. You see it illuminates very briefly this face full of these tendrils, and it has two large pincers for arms out in front of it, and he blasts it in its chest, and go ahead and roll damage. But I wanted to miss it. You hit above its AC. That's... <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a good thing that you hit it. Yeah, but, I mean, our, our only chance right now is to make friends with whatever this is. <laughs> Attacking it is not, not going to end well in no possible scenario. Hey, now that I'm, like, sitting back listening to you guys, I would listen to this podcast. Come on. We're, we're pretty good. It's pretty interesting. I'm glad you like us. <laughs> oh, yeah. So 10 total. 10 total. Okay, nice job. So underwater, though, that is halved, unfortunately. And now this this crab, it very clearly was swimming towards you, but let's roll initiative. So from, from my perspective, we see the, the light. And then all of a sudden, we see the light hit this thing, and it illuminates. And it looks big. One or two of them? Falls are hit one of them. How many do we see? You see one of them. Guess who's coming out to play, folks? Do, do, do I have a sense that we're out into the lake? Yes, yeah. You you definitely know that. You are away from the tunnel now, where Kralakina possibly is awakening right now, uh, and out into the lake itself. Do, do I also have a sense which way is up? Yes, through through falls and okay. survival checks and him, like the direction he was shooting the light was upwards to the surface. Can the, Barry breathe Barry underwater? underwater. <laughs> <laughs> Just come out and go, ah. Nat 20 for falls and then Barry is coming out to play. <laughs> and then oh, drown. Oh, shit. <laughs> I got Barry in, Barry in my pocket. Is that a Barry in your pocket? <laughs> And he's, he might be happy. <laughs> <laughs> Not when he takes a breath of water. <laughs> He'll just swim up to the surface. and then He'll just turn uh, back into the... Attack from there. The token. I got a 17. I have an 8. So I think my pocket will get real big, and then it'll sh- <laughs> shudder around a little bit, and then it'll get quiet, and then it'll shrink back down to it. <laughs> <laughs> and Barry the Badger, Barry the Vicious, Barry at the Vicious slowly suffocates in the water. Oh, Barry. So first up is Falzerin. Would I have ever read about a creature like this, or would I know anything about it? I'm, I'm mostly You can make in... a history check with disadvantage, because you've got a very brief instance of a look at it. 13. That's pretty decent. Yeah, you, you kind of... Just due to its size and its crab-like form, you recognize this as being a tool. And they're just kind of this this large aberration that you know cannot be reasoned with, if that's what you are thinking. Anything I know about what it might be resistant or susceptible to? How fast they are? Well, you certainly know they live in the water, so probably pretty fast. <laughs> I'll get that TPK yet. <laughs> yeah, I believe you. Obviously. <laughs> he kept saying, you guys will be fine. Yeah. Uh-huh. When, when did Talk you start Brent. believing him? Anything he said. I kind of did. Britain's pretty BA. It's terrible. Freaking Shikara. <laughs> Freaking Thoft. Uh, Thoft didn't give me two failed saves. Yeah, he did. He's the one that deflected my... Thy sword. On a crit fail? He deflected the sword. I'm I don't I don't blame you. This is stupid I need to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Shikara does feel bad if that makes you feel better. I'm going to create a an orb of energy, a chromatic orb, and hurl it at the creature. With a nineteen to hit. Oh yeah, definitely hits. And the I'm gonna make this orb out of Lightning. Okay. Can I do lightning underwater? I <laughs> Without really killing us all? You can do whatever yeah. you want, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's retcon that. Acid. <laughs> I don't know if that's a 
be better. shock the crap out of <laughs> Are you sure you don't want lightning? Because that's fun. <laughs> well, if I weren't in the water, I'd, I'd feel a little bit more confident. Sure, acid damage. Okay, go ahead and roll your damage. TPK. <laughs> um, sorry, did you make that attack roll with disadvantage? I didn't, no. Because you can't see him. Okay. So that's a uh, 16 to hit. That still hits on the dot. Nice, nice job. Ooh, baby. 14 acid damage. Ooh, nicely done. Shakara. Um, I had no idea. You have a general direction of where this thing is. The last time you saw it. So you, you would certainly be able to swim towards the last location that you saw of it. Okay, how well would slashing with a long sword work underwater? So the damage is the fire you, because it's a long sword, because it's not a finesse, no, there's a, there's a certain list of weapons like a trident or a javelin. You just have disadvantages using your attacks underwater. The damage will be the same. Do have a javelin? Would I know that that would work better? Yes, you probably, I don't know if you would know it, but yeah, you, you know it, sure. And it would have a, a reach. I wouldn't be able to. I wouldn't have to be right up in its face with a javelin, or what? I yeah, say. that's right. You all, yeah, you certainly know it's thrown. Absolutely. Okay, I'm gonna throw a javelin. So I guess I would be with disadvantage towards the area where I last saw his attack hit. Paul's run's attack hit. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So the, you saw it 60 feet away from you, basically. That was the last time you saw it. So I will move up the 15 feet, so that next time I could get close enough, and I will chuck my javelin at it. What do I add to my javelin attack? Is that a dex? It's still strength. It's still strength. Uh, so that is 21. So that is a d6 of damage, and I'm going to use my sparkly die for luck. Uh, my sparkly die is not lucky. That is four damage. You see it. Well, I guess you don't see it. <laughs> I chuck a javelin off into the darkness. Yep, I, so I won't describe what it looked like for the listener. I'm sorry, listener. <laughs> and I assume it hits because I'm that good. If a javelin sticks a thing and you can't see it, does it yeah, still Yeah, it does it still hit. Yeah, that's the age-old question. Pretty false. Shaft, you're up. I am swimming directly upward as fast as I can. Okay, you want to dash and move your full, yep. your, a double movement or a full movement or whatever? Double movement straight up. Falls are in, you see... Suddenly looming out of the darkness, you feel the the movement of water around you as this suddenly this crab-like beast is directly upon you. And it's going to use its turn to get up to you, so it can't do anything else. You are next. It's very close to me now. Yeah, so with within, yeah, this close, you can kind of make out some of its, its features. It... Still, like, uh, you know, it is what you had thought it was, but now, right up to it, you see kind of parts of its, of its, the like, the chitness, the carapace of it, is seems uh, almost like it's thinning or worn or missing chunks out of it. It looks, it looks pretty sickly. From all the damage I did to it? <laughs> I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't make that assumption. <laughs> wouldn't jump to that conclusion. Flatter yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and Shakara is still... I mean, you really don't see us at all, right? Who? Could I see where Shakara is? Um, I'll... It's, I don't know. I'm going to say you guys probably weren't literally swimming, like, side by side by side, right? Right. Uh, just to paint a picture, you feel like... I would assume we'd all feel like we were alone down there underwater. Yeah. In the dark with a great big crab thing. Yeah, Shakara and Shaft are literally just waiting for this blast of fire. And in that instance... As it leaves Falzern's finger, they certainly see him. So they would know your approximate position, but you would not necessarily know approximately where they are in this water. Well, I'm still pretty damaged, and this is a massive creature. So I think my best bet is is to try and get to the surface in a similar way the shaft did as well. So I'm going to take off swimming to the surface, and I'm going to do a dash action. So you don't you so you're not disengaging, so it will get an attack of opportunity against you. Okay, so then I'll disengage. And then you're gonna swim. Straight up. Yeah. Shakara. Can I tell which way is up? Uh you why don't you make me a survival check? Without Falsey's blast. Yeah, make me a survival check, um 
No, make it with with advantage because of Falzern's. Uh, Falzern had already previously determined it, but just make me a survival check. Seventeen. Okay, yeah, absolutely. You certainly can tell the way to the surface based on uh, Falzern's previous firebolts pointing the way. How close is the crab thing to me now? You cannot see it. As far as you know, it's where you saw it last getting hit by a firebolt. I'm going up as fast as I can, so a dash would only be 30 feet. Okay, Shaft. Keep swimming straight up as fast as possible. All right, so Shaft's a little ahead of everybody. Now the the tool will continue to follow Falzerin. Uh, it seems to lose its way. Falzerin, kind of below you, you again kind of feel the, the movement of the water, but... You don't see it appear next to you at all. And you're up. It's time to dash, baby. So I'm gonna dash straight up 60 feet. Because I'm I'm assuming by what you just said that I don't need to disengage this time around because he didn't make it right next yes, to me. Yes, that's accurate, absolutely. All right, 60 feet straight up and I'm gonna like just projectile out of the water like a dolphin. <laughs> do a somersault. <laughs> so we're going to kind of move away from this initiative as a combat and more into a bit of a chase as this thing is kind of chasing you all. So, uh, Shakara and Shaft, you guys can each get a full, like, dashing movement on your turns. And then the Chul is going to make another check to try to find you as it's subject to the same limitations of vision as, as you guys are. Around, around you, none of you see it come out of looming out of the darkness yet, so you're free to continue to the surface. And back to the top with Falzrin, you kind of, again, you make your dash. Now you're you're gaining ground on, like you're, you're getting well ahead of, of Shaft and Shakara with your uh, enhanced swim speed. And you do kind of hit the surface and you see the boat about 100 feet from where you've, you've come up, still just bobbing in the middle of this lake. Shaft and Shakara, you guys just continue just up, 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 up. Yep, 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 mm-hmm. yep, yep. Yeah. Uh, still no sign of the chul. Falls in. You're on the surface now. What are you doing? I'm going to cast a um, another firebolt in the direction of the boat, but I, I don't want to hit it. I just want to miss it. My intention is that anybody swimming below me is going to see this firebolt originate from me and head towards the boat. And with a little luck, they might even be able to see the boat illuminated or at least know where I am because they know where the firebolt came from. So you're going to shoot it below the surface of the water? Right. Okay, absolutely. So I'll swim uh, towards the boat. Shigar and Shaft, just you now kind of see this illumination uh, very, very close to, to where you guys are. I would swim towards where I assumed Falzerin would be. So like from its origination? Yes. Okay. Because absolutely. I would assume he's shooting at a bad thing. It would not go that way. <laughs> oh, I gotcha. That totally oh, makes no. sense. I, I'm i going to go straight up. Okay. Uh, the tool, also seeing your handy-dandy flare of a firebolt, it's much faster than both Shaft and Shakar. Let me see. Roll percentile here. Shaft, you suddenly, again, feel this ripple of water behind you and kind of glance over your shoulder. You see this. The first time you've seen this, really this monstrosity this crab its mouth full of squirming tentacles and still looking sickly but it is right on you uh it did move its make its full movement plus dash to get to you though so it does not get a chance to attack falzerin you're on the surface unaware of what's happening below you i'm how far from the boat you are now like 70 feet from the boat i'm gonna dash to the boat you're able to get to the boat I'll say, you you know, you kind of grab the, the, the bit of a rope of the lead of the end of this boat and between the waves kind of crashing and moving it, you're able to get to the boat itself. Not quite in it yet, but at it. Shakara, still, you just seen this flash of firebolt and unaware of what's happening with Shaft? Yep, gonna go up towards where I thought Falzerin was. Okay, and you also, you now get to the surface and you come up at the same spot from the origination of the firebolt, and you see Falzern at the boat, 100 feet in front of you. What time of day is it? It is still, uh, it's still, it's still bright out. It's still daytime. You were not in those caves for very long. Still under the effects of this hour-long water-breathing potion. Shaft. I know 
that this thing is right. I have. I'm aware of this thing yes, being right beside 100%, me. Yes, hundred percent. Yes. And uh, so I'm going to reach into my pocket, slam on the ring of the ram, and towards the uh, the creature. I don't know. Remember how that really works. That's but. quite all right. Because as you do so, nothing happens. As the ring is out of charges. charges for the day. Oh shit. Then I'm. Then I will. I will do that. I will. I will yell a curse word under the water, hoping that I'm close enough where it will bubble, up. bubble out, <laughs> so everyone hears it. <laughs> and then swim uh, with uh, my full movement as much as I can to try to break the surface. Okay, so we'll get an attack of opportunity to lash out at you. Oh, pff, very poorly. It's just you see this claw kind of slow, almost in slow motion, moving through the water at you, but. It's it. This thing looks like it's almost half dead. Well, it flinched from the ring. Nothing happened, but it still yeah. flinched, expecting it. That's why. Oh yeah, that's what it was. Yeah. The new exactly. Oh my goodness! <laughs> it's a ring, the ring of the ram. ram is oh the no! Fabled is, Slayer is of the Is that a ring of the ram? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the tool just chases you, and now it gets its full double claw attack on you, Shaft. Uh, wow! Critically fails on the first one, so it's going to hit itself. Perfect. Dealing 13 damage to itself. As you know, it's flurrying out in the water and it snips its own claw. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, the second claw, because of this strike of itself, it just again sails above your head in the water, missing your small form in this this thick blackness of, of, of water. Falzerin, you've seen you now see Shakara at the surface. You've yet to see Shaft, but you are at the boat. Okay, so Shakara, over here, swim as fast as you can. So I can, the tool hasn't actually surfaced. I can't see it. No. But maybe some bubbles I saw. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Faintly heard a cuss word. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna cast Mage Hand. I can move it up to thirty feet. So I'm gonna move it in a direction that I think the tool might be, but. I don't want it to be anywhere near Shakara, and I'm just going to splash Mage Hand all around in the water as much as I can. Try and make as much of a commotion, as much noise as Mage Hand can do, splashing the water around. I like it. I like it. So I'll, I'll let you with your movement to get into the boat if you want. Sure, yeah. Shakara. Uh, so I'm at the surface. I see Falzerin getting in the boat. He tells me to go over to him, and I'll say, Have you seen Shaft? Uh, and now I will look around for Shaft, and I will not go towards the boat till I see Shaft. Do you want to ready an action of some type? If the crabby thing surfaces, I will attack it. Shaft. I pull the uh, axe out of my belt as I'm swimming and wing it down towards this thing. Uh, assuming that I, it will come back to me. Because I've seen that happen before. Yeah, right? yeah, you have, you have. So you can add a plus six to this attack. Sixteen? That is a hit. Five. I mean, you still don't see anything. But through the water, you can't see, so... I just wing it down, swim like a son of a bitch, and sort of hold my hand out okay. and see if it comes back to my yeah, hand. Yeah, so you, so you swim and you, you now hit the surface as well, and... Falls are in a shikar, you both see shaft surface and flinging out of the water comes this returning hand axe as it misses shaft <laughs> and flies up out of the water for, you know, a, a brief second, comes back down into shaft's outreach hand. I go, get in the boat! Nice axe. <laughs> I've been working out. <laughs> Falls are in, you're in the boat. What are you doing? I'm going to start rowing. Uh, if I can, I row as well as maintain uh, mage hand. Yeah, mage hand doesn't require concentration. Okay, so I'm gonna start rowing towards Shaft and Shakara. Shaft and Shakara, you guys are just swimming to the boat. Yep. Absolutely. You're you are able to make it to the boat up and in now, dripping wet, covered in this this goo as it's kind of sloughing off of you. As if you recall, once it kind of the goo is out of the water, it, it takes on a little bit more of a viscosity, but. Seems to have nothing to do with the living. Currently, anyways. Though you ingested quite a bit of it. You're in the boat, and what now? I'd like to use Mage Hand as a rudder so that there's no need to steer with the oars. We can just paddle like mad. 
okay. What direction are you guys paddling? It's resourceful. Come on. It's hilarious. <laughs> inspiration. Give this man inspiration. Closest shore. Closest uh, shore, yeah. Wherever land is closest, let's get out okay, of here. Okay, so you just want to hit land. Yeah. That's it. Yes. You do. You get to basically the, the section of land that... Shakara, you know, near the the point where you saw the cultists drag the dwarf in and under the water. Okay. And you, ma- you make landfall. Get out of the boat and get away from the land a little bit. I jump out of the boat, run as uh, fast as I can, as far away from the water, fall down, take a deep breath, look at these two and go, well, that didn't go very well. I'm watching to see if the crab thing's coming after us. How long are you guys going to be sitting here on the shore for? Uh, Not very long. Uh, As soon as I catch my breath, I want to get away from this water. Yeah, we need to find somewhere to, to take a rest. I mean, we are in bad shape still. After a, a what would be a few rounds of combat, there's no sign of the tool. Well, what are we going to do here? I mean, yeah. Cray Lakina, all that stuff that's going on down there. I'd like to distance myself as far away from this place as possible. It is something that will need to be stopped. We cannot let this go on. I agree. We can't just, we can't just leave, leave what we found down there. You know, I I think so far they've either what they're doing isn't working, or they need to do it more times before this Kralakina comes back to life. But as you say that, falls in the middle of the lake, the same bubbling that you saw in the cave. The water starts to move and, and ripple, and this large black shadow you can see almost ascending to the surface as this this form now breaches and it's this swirl of long thick tentacles and this large mouth it's it's almost like this this oval shaped mouth full of teeth and you can all make me a history check oh that's good uh 20 21 for falzern six (laughs) <laughs> 20 for Bryn. <laughs> oh, wait, sorry. Aww. You immediately recognize this thing, especially from Surma's common chant that she let out at the end. This is a, a kraken that they've awoken. And you know the destructive force of this aberration. From what you see, it it's not nearly the scope and size of what legend foretells is this thing clearly looks like it's some type of juvenile that they have now successfully with the aid of shaft woken up and it breaches the surface of the lake paying no mind to you it slowly moves along the surface causing these huge large ripples despite its youth it is still monstrous in size and it moves towards the river and the cave in which you had taken this boat down back to the lake itself towards the city of Pisces. We can hope that it will bypass the city of Pisces and go straight for the ocean. Yeah, that's that's what I'm thinking is going to happen. Well, that would be nice, but I'm not I'm not going to rely on that. This this is bad. Who knows what this thing's going to do and and it looks young. I mean, it it's going to get bigger and bigger with the more time that goes by. Oh, I'm not going after the damn thing. It's, it's, it, we damn near died. All of us damn near died down there. I know. I'm in no shape to be fighting right now. And I, definitely not this monstrous beast. But where do we go next? We need some time to rest and, and heal up. We cannot just let it go and do nothing. Yeah, we can. We just lay here and go someplace else. I mean, I don't want to be around. We must at least lend aid to Pisces and anybody that may be left behind in its wake. We're in no shape to help anybody. So, um, 
Leland, we could make it to Pisces within the day, probably. Yeah, if you hoof it. How fast is the Kraken moving? It looks like it's swimming fairly quickly. It's making its way towards the tunnel that you guys took the boat down. I mean, I think you're right. I think the thing's going to the ocean. Do we think that it would beat us to Pisces if, if we took off in the same direction? Um, difficult to say. It looks like it'll be a bit of a tight squeeze for it going through that tunnel. I mean, if you want to jump on your horse and ride back and let them know, but then come back to us. Do we know what Bryn's wishes would be? Uh, no. Yeah, I... I don't know. I don't think she'd want to go back and attack the thing. Bryn's wishes with what to do about her situation. Would she wish to be resurrected? I, I've been thinking about that. I, I really don't know. I, I didn't know her that well. Not to mention, I, I don't know if we even have the resources to be able to accomplish that. I'd at least, at the very least, I, th I think we need to give her a proper burial if if we're not able to do anything to bring her back. Well, do you know some way to resurrect her? I know of someone in Pisces that may be willing to help. Uh, how much? That I am unsure. I reach into my pouch and open it up and I go, I bet it's a lot more than that. And I put it back in my pocket. I'm in the same boat shaft. I'm, I'm running low on funds and from what I understand of the magic that would be required, it, it's not cheap. Yeah, and I don't want to owe anybody else any favors. That was what I was going to suggest. Well, I feel strongly that we need to, at the very least, Go to Pisces and see what this creature has wrought in its path. I think you've got a good point, Shikara. I I'm in no shape to fight it and really have no interest to fight it um, today. It I'm going to die probably if that happens. And I'm, I'm not willing to die fighting this thing right now. But, you know, it, maybe we can go there and if it's already made it there, we can help survivors or... With a little luck, it goes out into the ocean and doesn't touch the town. But it's our closest town we could go to to rest and to get some healing, perhaps, if there's any healers there. What do you think, Shaft? I think it is probably going out to find Erica. If you notice, they didn't know she was potentially dead. I did not think we were going to get out of that cave. Well, no. It, it wasn't going too well. And... I mean, you, you did notice there was Gozer and Thuft, and whoever that other dude was. That was my uncle, who died ten years ago. Ten years ago? He was lost in the storm. I wonder how, I wonder who and how he was brought back from ten years ago. I had assumed Erica had been working all this time. Yeah, maybe he's been living like that for years and years. That pains me to think that that may be the case. I agree. I'm glad we've we've put our former friends and family members to rest finally. There's there's something a lot deeper here. I mean, your buddy Brendel, what's up with that? Falzern is just kind of reeling and exasperated. I don't even know what to think about that shaft. H how long has he been like that? You know, is is this friendship I've had with him been alive for years and years? I don't know. It's a good question. But I'll say this. Danzig's not the same guy he used to be. He's turned into one of those fish things. Scion. When was the last time you had seen your brother? About three years ago. Or more. I, th I assumed he was dead too, and this confirms it. He's probably was dead and brought back like all the others. Well, Shaft, I think you, you make a decent assumption that this thing might be going out to the ocean to find Erica, which is beneficial for us. It buys us some time. 
maybe it, it, it's got no interest in, in fighting in its juvenile form. So it may just try and get get past Pisces and get out to the ocean and, you know, kind of look for its master, more or less. And to the best of our knowledge, Eric is dead. So I think we may have maybe a few days uh, before we run into this thing again. Well, you know, our best bet is probably go find Isabella. She obviously hates Erica, and she had nothing to do with any of this. Let her take care of the situation. That's... We can just let her know and get the hell out of here. Would Isabella take care of this situation? Not our problem. We already uh, took care of the contract that we had problem. with her. It is our problem. We released it. My worry is that Isabella is unpredictable, and I think she likes power. And what if she finds out about this Kraken that maybe she didn't know was being resurrected or, or formed or whatever, however that it came to be, and sees it as a potential pet for her now that Erica is out of the question? She could be a powerful ally, but, you know, I don't know her very well, and I don't know where all of her intentions lie. I don't trust any of them. No, I do have another option if we need some allies. Oh yeah? Falls her in kind of shuffles in spot and, and looks a little bit uncomfortable. Maybe a little bit guilty that he hasn't shared any of this before, but he says, now, Shaft, we've known each other for a little while, and I know, it, you know, with our group, we weren't exactly forthcoming with where do we come from and our history, but I I may be able to contact some folks that could be of a lot of help with this massive aquatic beast that probably is going to wreak destruction on Aspara. Have you heard of the Tritons? I have heard of the Tritons. Uh, and, and legend. Well, Shaft, they're, they're not legend. If you're a keen observer, you may have noticed that I'm pretty good at swimming. I'm also able to hold my breath longer than an average person. And, and The reason I have this sort of magical ability is because of an interaction I had with the Tritons many years ago. And from what I understand, they, they seek to do good and protect this realm from evil. So if I can get in touch with them, they're probably going to want to know about this massive beast and may be willing to uh, summon up some of their forces to come and help fight it. I'm, I'm sorry, how do you know the Tritons? It's a bit of a long story, but... Apparently we have time since we are not doing <laughs> anything else. The short version <laughs> is that... When I was younger, I I almost drowned in the sea, close to where I grew up, and I was saved by a triton who found me drifting under the water, not able to swim and save myself, and the triton saved my life, and also bestowed on me a bit of a natural magical ability to swim and hold my breath and I'm able to, to get in touch with that Triton should something arise like this essentially where I would need to call on them for aid or, or let them know about something happening in the land of Aspara when, when Falzon says that he he was uh, saved and he was given ability Shakara gets like right up in his face and like tries to look at his neck and smell him a little bit and like you do not appear to have gills. And I'm like pulling out his neck. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, Shakara. There's, there's no way for anyone to be able to see that I'm any different, which is why I've been able to keep it secret for so long. But I'm quite good at holding my breath underwater and swimming. And I know of a way to be able to reach out and contact this civilization of tritons that lives deep down in the sea. So, are you like part triton now? No, I'm I'm still my race wasn't changed, but I was 
I was granted a bit of uh, sort of like ability from from the Tritons, some power, some natural magic. I don't quite understand how it works or how it happened. This is fascinating. Yes. And I also, I don't know if you'd call it a friendship, but I have a contact within the Tritons that that I can reach out to. And I think, you know, Tritons are, are good. Uh, they have good intentions. They stand to vanquish evil whenever it arises. I think they're a much safer bet than reaching out and contacting Isabella, who's a bit of a wild card. How do you contact them? What do you need to do? Well, Shakara, this adds a little bit of complexity because we would have, I would have to travel a distance to, to meet up. I, I have a location underwater that, as far as I'm aware, only I know about. And I can leave a message to reach out and contact them. And, and the Tritons routinely check this area for such messages. It would involve going back to Herakthon, which is a bit of a travel, but if we're going to head to Pisces, that's already getting to the coast, maybe I could get a vessel to, to sail me to to Herakthon from there. It is settled then. We will travel to Pisces and ensure that no one else has come to harm, and at the same time find a cleric and lay Bryn to rest while Falzerin goes on to leave his message. So... The whole time you guys are talking, Shaft's sitting there, you know, cleaning his fingernails out with his dagger, looking up every once in a while. He goes, so, you can you can hold your breath a long time and swim really fast. Not much of a secret there. Great. Now you want to go up where this thing's going, and then we're going to try to contact these guys? Why can't we just go right to the water? Jump in, go get them. Why do we want to go to Pisces where this, where this uh, creature's going? To help and lend aid if needed. Well, the, the my other thought, Shaft, is that we can get to Pisces perhaps before nightfall and be in a good position to rest. Um, you know, maybe we can find a safe... It's much safer to rest in town. With, with a little luck, this this kraken has already passed through the town and is, and is out at sea by the time we get there. If we, if we go to Port Randis, we're going to be traveling through, you know the wilderness more or less for more than a day and and we need to rest once we get to a coastal city traveling by boats pretty quick so you know although port randis is closer to heraklion if we can get to pisces today and rest get in better shape i can perhaps find someone to sail me to heraklion and and the trip that trip's not going to be that long that's my thought all right i'm in pretty rough shape here as am i uh I'm not traveling anywhere till till we heal up. You you want to take a short rest here, is, sit down for a little while, or what are you what are you proposing? Well, let's 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 walk about a half an hour towards Pisces. Get the hell away from the shore here. Who knows what's going to come out from underneath in that cave? That is a very good point. I think we like start walking. I'm going to start walking. <laughs> yeah, I don't think staying around here is safe. If if you do want to rest before we get to Pisces, Shaft. We need to put some distance between us and this location. I'm going to look over Shaft and I'm going to say, How hard are you? And look for wounds. <laughs> there should be plenty of wounds. <laughs> How hurt are you? I have eight hit points left. I'm I'm pretty beat up. I am going to lay my hand on you, Shaft, and stop you for a second and say, One moment. And cast Cure Wounds on you. Seven points of health. Do you feel a little better now? A little. Do you think you can walk and make it to Pisces? Oh, I can walk. I'll, we'll make it. If we run into anything, though, I, I'd just as soon avoid it. I agree. We need to be careful. We're in no shape to be running into any more trouble. We've already lost Bryn. I don't want to lose anyone else. Okay, so we're walking? Yep. Unless you want to ride ahead on your horse. I mean, you can warn them, and then and then see if the see if the kraken's already there, tearing the hell out of Pisces. I do not feel comfortable leaving you two behind, though. I think we'll be we'll be all right if we go slow. You know, just you and I, Shaft. If we run into something, we're in we're in trouble. Okay. So this kraken now, this juvenile kraken, you 
kind of see it disappearing in the, in the distance as it's now hitting the tunnel that leads to Pisces. Kind of submerges a little bit. Its tentacles kind of spraying, spraying around in, in the water as it submerges and looks like it just barely fits into this like 15 foot wide cave. And uh, so far, it doesn't seem like anything else has surfaced anywhere in, in this lake. Just the, the juvenile kraken. So I guess we walk... I don't want to get anywhere near it, but it's kind of taking the most direct path to Pisces, right? It, yes, it has, for sure. And we can either... I mean, we had come down the river, um, which goes through the hills. Yep. And that was in our boat, which... We left behind because we're walking, and I don't want to get back on the lake in order yeah. to go up the river. <laughs> no, I don't either. So we're gonna have to go over the hills then, right? Yeah. So I assume that'll take us a little longer. Is that a favorite train for you, Shaft? Yeah, you can go regular speed through a mountain those areas. Beautiful. Falzarin, was that you that made the fog cloud that allowed us to get out of the cave? It was. Yes. That was very inspirational. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I was just going to say that. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, wasn't that inspiring? I don't think I was as inspired as you were. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I I felt like we didn't have much of a much of an option in, in that situation. We were stuck, and there was no way we were getting around them without some sort of diversion. No, I believed we were done for. I think Shaft tried to make a diversion for us. There was just too many of them. All right, I'm glad you guys picked up on it. <laughs> <laughs> I look over at Shaft and, and kind of give him a wink. <laughs> <laughs> I shake my head. <laughs> so does that mean we are awarding Falzern with inspiration? I vote yes. We, I we vote no. A, we don't have a tiebreaker <laughs> here. We're missing our third. I vote yes. <laughs> Who's okay. that? Who, who am I here? <laughs> Uh, the ghost of Bryn votes yes. <laughs> I see your muffled affirmations from your bag of holding. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like wriggling around in there. So who has inspiration right now then? Because I have one listed on my sheet, but I don't know if we did that on mic or off mic. Yeah, I don't think that was actually on mic. And, and that was four. Yep, that was four we've given out. Yeah, so this would be number four out of five. One more free, and then... Uh... The DM starts getting inspiration. Yep. So you guys are able to continue uh, another couple of miles in this maybe in this thirty minutes that you guys wanted to, to travel, right? Yeah. So are you going to continue now? It doesn't appear like there's anything. Uh, there's any immediate threat as now this kraken has, has disappeared from your view. So. Here's the thing, we're never going to, we're, we're banking on this thing passing up Pisces altogether, right? Correct. Okay, because if it doesn't, there's going to be a lot of people die. Well, then we can lend our aid. I'm really hoping that, I know it's a long shot and we don't know what's going through this thing's head, but it's more or less a, a baby, it's a juvenile. I think it probably wants to get out to see where it can grow and maybe find some food and like Shakara said, maybe it's going to find Erica. So I think our odds are okay that this thing might just try and pass right through Pisces and leave the city unmolested. I agree. Okay. I don't think I have any friends in Pisces anyway. Except Rugar. That's true. Oh no, Rugar. <laughs> <laughs> we all start running. <laughs> <laughs> the beer. The beer. What a travesty <laughs> it would be if Rugar was was no longer in Aspara. Yeah, because he couldn't give us free beer for life. Yeah, we had a deal. Yeah, we had a deal. With I him. mean, I I think he's just a, a great guy who I'd like to see around. But he was a fine fellow. Is is a fine fellow. <laughs> so I, I guess the point is, if we keep walking. We're not going to be able to take a short rest, use any hit die, or do anything. If it's if we're trying to get back there quickly to either help or warn, then we need to go a lot faster than we're going now. If we're going to go and see the remnants of what's there, potentially, then we can continue to walk at our pace. Do you have any suggestions of how we might go faster? 
I do not believe Buttercup could hold all three of us. Uh, not, not within my means. Other than you taking the horse. Maybe we can um, f- find some uh, flat pieces of wood that we can strap to Shaft's feet. And <laughs> keep behind Buttercup. <laughs> string a rope behind Buttercup. <laughs> this scared? is the best idea you've ever had. <laughs> Inspirational, you may say. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, you can't get any more inspirational than you already are. <laughs> well, I mean, we just handed out in the span of two episodes half as, <laughs> like, twice as much inspiration as we've ever awarded out in the last six. The first so. 50 years. Use yeah. it or lose it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, exactly. What Shaz, that you guys can make the decision whether or not you do want to attempt to beat the Kraken and or arrive early enough to maybe warn or save more people or or yeah like Shaft says if you don't think there's a way of, of getting to Pisces in a timely manner compared to how quickly the, the Kraken may be moving through this tunnel then it may not be worth busting your ass for it. Do you think the Kraken would have to move through the tunnel slow though because of its size? Yeah you guys could certainly like it. it's a squeeze for, for it. it will for sure not be able to be moved as, as fast as it normally would in open water. How long do we think it'll take the Kraken to get to Pisces? Well, it took you about three to four in the boat. Three to four hours? Yeah, and the boat was unhindered. That's a that's about as long as it would take you to walk as well, at a normal pace. So it'd probably take the Kraken a little bit longer. So we had... It- we could, if we just walk, it'll take us about the same amount of time to get to Pisces as the Kraken. We could arrive there about the same time. My argument would be that I believe that Shaft and uh, Falzern can take care of ourselves in the time frame. It would take you to Paul Revere it back there and say the Krakens are coming and, and, you know, give warning and then get back to us. Even if we just stopped, I would think you would want to warn the city if that's if that's what you're proposing, Shaft, should there's no rush for us to get back there. Should we right. try and find a safe spot to rest for an hour while Shakara is making haste to get back there on Buttercup? So I sort of scan over the the landscape and and do I see anything that could be a potential danger to us, or does it look pretty peaceful? You can make a perception check. Twelve, thirteen. Yeah, you guys are, are very near the beginning of these foothills by this kind of what this cave cuts through. So there's a lot of open area around you and you can see for at least a couple miles in this clear day currently. So there's doesn't appear to be anything at all in, in the vicinity. Nothing again, nothing else have come out of, out of the water. So it seems fairly clear for the time being. So we're, we're a distance from the lake now. Yeah, you're about 30 ish minutes, right? You guys have been kind of walking. We'll be safe here, and I can see anything coming from miles away, and we can get the hell out of here if we need to. All right, I will ride ahead and warn the city. So I'm going to sit down and uh, try to get some rest. Okay, I will summon Buttercup with my very last spell. Ten minutes later, this magical steed appears. (laughs) So I'll hop on Buttercup, and I'll say, I will be back as soon as I am able, and I will ride off to Pisces. And that's our show. Be sure to follow us on social media, Incorrigible Par on Twitter, Incorrigible Party on Facebook and Instagram. You can visit IncorrigibleParty.com for additional world and NPC information and to get all your Incorrigible Party merchandise. Merchandising. That's where the real money is made. Get a flamethrower. The kids love that one. The Incorrigible Party is sponsored by Critical Hit Design. For your design needs, visit CriticalHitDesign.com. That's me. All ambient sounds and music during the episode are courtesy of TabletopAudio.com. And our intro and outro music was created by Josh Jarvis. You can contact him for your own musical inquiries via email at jamesmercymusic at gmail.com. Happy adventuring!